I think we'll be able to get through most of this um, within an hour. Um, if we, if you have any questions that come up um, during the session itself, feel free to just unmute your microphone and go ahead and um, ask those questions. Um, if it's sort of a general question that can wait till the end, um, feel free to put it in the chat um, or email me. Um, but if it's something you want addressed right then and there, please don't put it in the chat because most of the time I just can't kind of monitor that and, and run the session at the same time. So let me get my presentation open here and get my screen shared with you. Um, I am recording the, the presentation and um, you'll be able to access that uh, probably about 30 minutes after if you are interested or if you want to share it with anybody else. So let's see, for this session, we have 92 people signed up. Um, looks like we got about 50 plus already connected. So um, probably gonna have some more people joining us along the way. So this session, um, I called it free screencasting tools. And um, what I think of when I think of screencasting is the idea of being able to record what you're doing on a computer screen, um, some series of steps, um, usually with some kind of uh, narration. So at least your voice saying, you know, okay, open up Microsoft Word, um, you know, go to file, new, click this, type this, whatever. Um, and them being able to actually watch you do it at the same time. Um, it's not intended to be something that, um, generally speaking anyway, that the students would be actively participating in at the same time. It's usually something that you would record yourself and then you would make that recording available to them after the fact. So a lot of people, you know, the past, a few years ago anyway, suddenly the concept of flipped classroom became a, a really big popular thing where, you know, teachers record themselves doing something. They expect the students to watch that um, offline on their own time and then you know, come to class the next day ready to actually um, actively work on the material. So um, there's a number of different tools that, um, that are free that you can use for this type of a purpose. Um, there are a number of tools that um, are paid uh, or, you know, for a fee that you can use for this purpose. And pretty much all of the free tools that I'm going to show you also have a um, premium version that you can upgrade to for a fee that gives you some extra features and bells and whistles and that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm really going to just focus on the, the free stuff for today. Um, there's really only a few of them that we're going to talk about. Um, I was actually, frankly, pretty disappointed. Um, you know, I've, I've done screencasting for a long time and um, I was disappointed in the sense that when I started preparing for this session, I was expecting to find a lot more tools out there, newer tools than maybe what I was familiar with from you know using two or three or five years ago. And um, quite honestly, most of what I found was those same exact tools still um, as the popular ones. Uh, certainly they've been updated um, and certainly uh, most of them still work very well. So um, those are the ones we're gonna focus on. Um, let's see, so as far as what are screencasting tools, We've kind of covered most of this. Um, the video that you're going to generate from your screencast, you, the next question is, how are the students going to get to it? So are you going to upload it to YouTube um, so that they can play it from there? Are you going to put it in your Google Drive and then turn around and share it with them from your Google Drive? It needs to be someplace, pretty much in the cloud at this point, um, with the environment that we're in. In the past, you probably could have said, well, I'll, I'll create my video. Uh, maybe I'll put it into a shared folder on the network and only the students then can get to it because, you know, only the the staff and the students in the school have access to that network. Um, that's really not going to work anymore if they're needing to access this from home. So those are the things that you need to think about as you think about making these recordings is where can you put them and are they going to be able to get to it? And of course, the other part of that is do they have internet at home? Do they have good internet at home? That kind of thing. Um, we actually had a discussion just briefly in, in one of the 
earlier sessions about like putting content on flash drives and being able to send it home that way. Um, certainly that would work as well, uh, as long as the tool that you use allows to generate a file that can be saved locally. One of the tools I'm going to show you, for example, um, does not allow for that. It only allows you to save the file to the cloud, and that's the only choice that it has. And because of that, if they don't have internet access, they would not be able to watch that file or watch that video. Uh, some of the tools are very, very simple, and that's actually typically a good thing. Um, and some of the tools actually also limit you in the length of the recording that you can make. And I'll try to call those out um, as we get to them. Um, that also, though, quite honestly, is a good thing as well. Um, think about your students. Think about your staff even. Um, are they likely to watch a five-minute video or are they likely to watch a 60-minute video? I guess they're probably going to be more likely to at least stay engaged for five minutes um, rather than that 60-minute video. So usually shorter is better. It makes you focus. It keeps them focused. And hopefully it uh, keeps them engaged for the entire length of it. Um, let's see. So I think I've talked about everything uh, on that slide. The next slide that I've got here uh, talks about um, the Windows snipping tool and an equivalent tool um, on the Mac. Now, I don't necessarily consider this to be screencasting per se. This is really more about just sort of grabbing um, like a screenshot or a partial screenshot that you would maybe use then to paste into some kind of a tutorial document that you're putting together. But I think it does apply here as we're thinking about, you know, how can we um, either make instructional documents, maybe versus instructional videos, um, to show, you know, somebody how to do something. So what I actually need to do here is I'm going to stop my sharing for a second. And I'm going to share my entire screen instead of just my window. OK, so it probably didn't really change much to you. You're still seemingly seeing the same thing. But originally, I was just sharing my window. So I would have only been able to show you what I was doing in this uh, Google Chrome uh, window. What I want to show you now, though, is the snipping tool. And because that tool is not part of Chrome, without sharing my full screen, you wouldn't have been able to see it. So let's say that I wanted to sort of demonstrate to students you know, something about this top menu here um, in Google Slides. I could launch the snipping tool from a Windows computer um, by just either going into the search box and typing snipping tool or if you've already added an icon, or in my case, I've pinned it down to my taskbar, I can launch that. It brings up this small window. From that small window, I can choose, do I want to make a new snip? What kind of mode do I want to use? And so it gives me a choice of doing a free form. Free form would mean that I literally can trace around something. Let me show you that real quick. If I click free form. And then I say new. What I can do now is literally with my mouse draw out something like that. Were you able to see me do that? OK, cool. Just wanted to make sure because my screen changes a little bit when I did that. So you see how I drew around just that particular part of the screen. It grabbed just that particular part. Most of the time, you probably don't want to be freeforming. Um, quite honestly, I almost always have it on rectangular snip. And so if I go back and do a new one on that, you can see now what it's going to do is it's going to let me kind of draw out a box to grab like an entire section. And then it snipped that entire thing. OK, so that's probably more likely what you're going to do. Once you've got this in here, I can now use the pen tool if I wanted to, to say, hey, we're going to be talking about how to move um, the document to a different folder. We're going to be talking about how to make some different types of objects. I could use my highlight tool, talk about the tools menu, OK, or the view menu. So I can use these tools ahead of time to get some annotations, if you will, on top of what I've just snipped, and then 
I can either just go up and say copy, or I could have just hit control C, or I could save it. If I just say copy, now if I go into wherever I want, let's say I want to put that on my Google slide here, I can literally just right click and say paste. And there is the snip that I just did along with the annotations that I did on top of it with the highlighting and the circling and all those types of things. And it's right there. I could have gone into a Word document. I could have gone into a Google Doc or any place else that allows pasting. And I would have gotten this exact same image um, showing up there. And because it's now just an image, I can resize it. I could delete it. I could move it around. I can do whatever I want with it. Okay. So very, very easy to do. I also, from my snipping tool, could have said file, save, and then I could, you know, call it whatever I wanted to, to call it, um, maybe Google Slides, snip, pick the type of file format, maybe I want it to be a JPEG, because maybe that's the only version of uh, images that my program supports. And now it would be saved, and now I would have to do something like insert image, upload from computer, go and figure out where I saved it, um, which I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to, quite frankly. I think it was probably in my documents folder. So wherever it was, I saved it anyway. I'd have to go out and find that and import it that way. So obviously doing the, the copy and paste method, much, much simpler, much quicker. So it makes it very, very easy for you to make any kind of uh, tutorial, um, even if, you know, back to the concept that the student doesn't have, um, you know, internet access. If you can get them a printed copy, well, we could easily make them a set of printed instructions um, by, you know, just going into a Google Doc and typing in, you know, look for this, open this, uh, paste in a snip of what the screen should look like for them. And uh, that way they would at least um, have a hard copy if they can't watch your video. And even for building out like Google Slides like this. So if I flip over to this slide, this particular image that's on this particular slide, guess where that came from? I just went my snipping tool. I had that window open. I drew a picture around it and I pasted it into my slide. So it makes it very easy for you to, um, you know, insert your own images for whatever your purpose is. There is also um, some Mac equivalents. I'm not uh, a Mac user personally, but I did go out and do some Googling on these. Um, so if you are a Mac person, um, Command Shift 3, Command Shift 4 seem to do uh, some of the similar types of things. So feel free to take a look at those. All right, so now we're going to move on to some of the um, actual screen casting tools, the actual sort of video recording tools that um, that we're really more focused on for this session. So the first one um, is a tool called Screen Screencastify. This is actually a Chrome extension that you can install. Um, by Chrome extension, that means that it's not like an icon out on your desktop that you would double click on or necessarily a website that you would go to um, launch the tool. Um, it actually shows up up in your Chrome browser. And let me see if I can, I don't think I can zoom this part in at all. Hey, Bob, I have a question. When we're using our school's laptop, can we download and do that with the permissions that we have? I think you'll be able to install this one because it's an extension. Um, if not, let me know and we can we can address that. Some some extensions we can actually push out in mass as well, meaning that we sort of install them for everybody at once. But good question actually for a lot of these tools because uh, a lot of them do involve actually downloading and installing something on your computer. And if you're using a school computer and your school is mean like us and doesn't let you install anything you want, um, you know, you might have to get uh, some tech support in order to do that. So Screencastify, um, 
I'm going to point to where it is, but it's going to be, I know, super, super tiny for you to see. So I apologize for that. Way up in the upper right-hand corner of my screen, it looks kind of like a, an orange uh, arrowhead. Um, so that's where it actually goes uh, once I install the extension. So let's talk for a second just about um, what its limitations are and capabilities as well. Um, it does limit you to five minutes per video with the free version. Um, you can record either a particular browser tab, your whole desktop, or just your webcam, or any sort of combination of those. Um, so that's what this webcam can be embedded means, is you can be recording um, like your desktop and have your webcam show up as a small video in the, like the lower right-hand corner of it, for example. And people do say that um, it's important uh, for you to have that webcam turned on if you're doing this kind of stuff for students. You know, that, that whole concept of the attachment to the teacher and the engagement with the teacher, even though they're seeing or hearing your voice potentially in the narration, seeing your face, seeing your video, um, you know, while people are skittish usually about, they don't like to be, you know, seen and be on video and all that kind of stuff, but um, put on your best pajamas you know, do your hair um, and record your videos. So um, I mentioned that it's an extension. Um, when you install the extension, it asks you a whole bunch of permissions questions. Um, I didn't really care for that, but it's sort of the nature of the beast. Can I access your camera? Can I access your Google Drive? Can I access this? Can I, you know, can I edit websites that you're looking at? Um, so those are always scary questions to answer, but um, short of saying yes to every one of them, the tool isn't going to work. So I guess just be aware of that. Um, this one does have some annotation type tools while you're doing the recording. But the funny thing about it is that it actually um, embeds those tools somehow directly in the HTML of the web page you're looking at at the time. And so if you're on, let's say, if I'm on this tab right now and I start um, their tool up, I will have those tools in the lower left-hand corner of this page. But if I suddenly flip over to another tab, like a sheet or any other tab, it doesn't matter what it is, those tools will suddenly disappear because it embedded those tools on that first page that I was on when I started the recording. So that was kind of strange to me. Uh, I'll try to demonstrate that to you in just a second here, but um, it is something to be aware of. And if you're trying to demonstrate something like, you know, that's not web-based at all, like you're trying to demonstrate how to do something in Microsoft Word, um, you won't have those tools at all either. Once you're done with the videos, you're able to save them either directly to your Google Drive. Um, actually, it not not can, but it will save them directly to your Google Drive in a folder called Screencastify. Um, I could find no mention of closed captioning um, with the video recording whatsoever uh, either. So that's something to be aware of too, and we'll talk about closed captioning a little bit more later. So let me see if I can turn this uh, tool on and see if it'll work on this particular site. So again, I'm going to go up to my Screencastify uh, Chrome extension in the upper right hand corner of my screen. I'm going to click on that. It's loading up here. I can choose whether I want, again, to record just the browser tab, my entire desktop, or just my webcam. I can choose whether I want my microphone so I can narrate and I could pick which microphone that I would be using. I can see as I'm talking here that I'm probably on my right microphone. And I can choose whether I want to embed my webcam or not. So even though I didn't pick webcam up here, I'm going to be recording my screen or my browser tab with my webcam embedded kind of, you know, in the, the lower right-hand corner of it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Record. And we're going to give it a second here. There it goes. It's giving me a countdown. So I've actually got the wrong um, 
camera turned on. I'm seeing just a black screen here. I've got two cameras. My, one's in my laptop that's actually the lids closed. So that's why I'm seeing a black window rather than my video. But you would see yourself down here because I embedded it. These are those tools, those annotation tools that I talked about down here in the lower left-hand corner. So I could do a focus mouse, meaning that as I'm moving my mouse around, see it kind of puts that halo uh, effect over top of it. So I can turn that on and off. I can hide the cursor when not moved. Um, I can do what they call highlight clicks, which means anytime I click on something, um, it'll draw the attention to that click spot. I can pause my recording. I can pick a pen tool and I can pick a color for that pen. Maybe I want it kind of yellow so I can do some of this type of stuff. You got an eraser so I can come back and pull that back off. Okay, I've got my webcam, so I could turn that on after the fact if I hadn't turned it on ahead of time, and I can turn off the tools if I want to. Now, uh, again, what you have to be aware of, as I mentioned, um, is that um, if I go to another tab, it will um, automatically get rid of these tools. So let's say that I flip over to my Google Drive tab here. It's still recording but unfortunately i've now lost that set of tools that i had just a second ago so just something to be aware of let me go ahead and stop my recording actually that's to hide the tools let's see up here on the, uh, the extension button again now i can uh, stop my recording Now that I stopped my recording, it's loading up another tab here, and it should show me the video uh, recording that I just did. Okay, I have some basic tools where I can um, where I can um, sort of snip it down. You know, I can trim off like the front end of the recording. Maybe I just had a bunch of dead space at the, the end, and maybe I couldn't figure out how to stop my recording so I could trim off like the last 10 seconds or whatever. Some of those basic things I can do, and then I would just do a save trim. It's telling me if I do this that I'm, I can't get that stuff that I'm trimming off back again. It takes a second to, um, to cut it down to the, to the shorter version. Um, I'd be able to now play the video if I wanted to, to see, you know, that, um, that it in fact worked the way that I thought it did and, and everything. So I don't know if you can see that very well, but see how my mouse is moving around. So no hands. It's in fact doing all the stuff that, um, that I had recorded in the video. So there's me turning on the, the highlight or the, the halo effect. Let's jump ahead in the video here and see what it did if I switch tabs. I think in that particular case, I'm trying to remember if I had told it just to record the one tab only. And if I did, um, then we won't see that other tab at all. It just kind of, we would still hear the, the audio, but we wouldn't, um, yeah, now you can see where I came back and um, was trying to figure out how to stop it. So you would also be hearing yourself at that same time. So you would hear the narration that you did as well. Somebody have a question? Yeah, I just had a quick question. If I did not embed my own um, video of myself, would it still do uh, like the voiceover? Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, if you chose to to have the voiceover. I mean, that's not a requirement either, but normally because you're trying to teach somebody how to do something normally, yes, you would have that turned on. So um, once this is done, um, what we wanna do is we wanna give it a name. So up here at the top is actually where we would name it. Um, okay. 
Okay. Um, we've got some choices over here related to uh, what's going to happen with it in Google. We can get a Google shareable link. So that would be, again, where you could send it out as an email or some other method of communicating with um, whoever it is that you want to share this with. And um, that's now copied to my clipboard so I can literally go into an email and paste it or go to my website or Twitter or Facebook or whatever and paste that link for people to be able to get to it. Um, some nice things here, share directly to, to Google Classroom. So those of you that are using Classroom, that's a pretty nice feature. We can also publish it directly to YouTube. Um, again, you'd have to have a YouTube channel of your own already built for that to work. Um, send an email. Let's see what send an email does, because I, I think it's still just going to generate a link. Because I don't believe this gives you a way to um, get an actual downloaded file. And I'm not typing any of this. It's automatically generating this email, by the way. Yes, and see how it just it gave us basically a link to the video. Uh, we can generate a QR code. Um, so if you get some kind of posters in the school or you know some other way that the, you can have students get to your video, you can do it that way. Um, actually, here we go. OK, well, we can download it. So this is cool. Export as MP4. So we would be able to um, download this video uh, with the whole concept of being able to put it on a flash drive or, or something like that for students that didn't necessarily have internet access. I don't know why I didn't notice that yesterday when I was looking at this. If I go and look in my Google Drive, let's just verify that it went where we think it should go. I should have a folder now called Screencastify. And sure enough, I do. I did not make that folder. It made it for me. And I should have a couple of videos in there, probably one that I, when I was testing previously and then the one that we just did now. So there's my videos. I'd be able to come in here, right click. I could go to share. I could adjust the share settings. I could get the share link from here if I couldn't remember what the, the um, you know, if I still didn't have the video open there. Um, I can adjust who can view it if necessary. It automatically had set it to anyone with the link can view. So my permissions are set well. So anyway, that's uh, Screencastify. It's a Google Chrome extension. Um, it works um, on a Chromebook. It works on a Windows machine. And um, so uh, five minute uh, video limit though, and um, those tools, as I mentioned, are only gonna work on the particular tab that you started your recording from. So, all right, let me close this up. The next one we're gonna talk about is actually by a um, Michigan-based company uh, called TechSmith. TechSmith um, is out of Okemos near Lansing. Um, you may have heard of their tools before. They've got um, uh, Camtasia. They, uh, the tool that's been very popular in schools for a long time is one called Jing. Um, Jing has actually been replaced now technically by um, a tool called uh, Capture instead. Um, actually, still, I had still Jing installed um, as of last night, ended up removing it and putting uh, their capture tool on instead. Um, so they are one, um, and I'm certain about this one, that they do not give you the ability to download their video. Um, they actually, um, their videos automatically publish to their own web service. And you have to have an account to do that. You can make a free account. Um, so this is still free, but um, you have to create an account and um, then you log into their software. And when you log into the software and do a recording, that recording is automatically uploaded to your cloud storage in their service. 
Um, one of the limitations on Jing used to be only five minutes of video recording for their free product. With uh, Capture, um, there's not that same five minute limit, but with their free account, they limit you to two gigabytes of free storage and two gigabytes per month of bandwidth. And so if you were doing video after video after video, and especially if they were long videos, you could eat up that two gigabytes in a hurry, and therefore you've essentially you know, limited out in that way. <clears throat> it also says that with their free account that your content is stored for 12 months. So I'm pretty sure that just means that, you know, if your asset's been there for 12 months, that particular asset will go away. Um, you can up upgrade, of course, to their free or to their non-free service and pay some kind of a monthly or, or annual fee to use the tool. But um, it is a nice tool. Um, it lets you do both video recording, like screencasting, like we're talking about here, as well as uh, just to do like partial screen captures, kind of like what I was showing with, with the uh, snippet tool a second ago. Um, so let me show you um, TextMist Capture. So I've got it running in the background. And so the Shift key and F11 actually sort of launches it if it's already running. So I'm going to hit that right now. And it comes up and gives me this kind of crosshair type view where I can decide, again, what part of the screen that I want to record. And I just kind of draw out a box to decide what area that I want to uh, be dealing with. Now, I can just take a picture of that. So I can click Capture Image. And let me, again, verify you're able to see what I'm talking about. Or I can actually get a close out of this because everybody's, were you able to see yeah, that? Yeah, we could see it, Bob. Okay, Thanks. all right. Thank you. Because when I when I uh, activate that, it actually freezes the screen. So I couldn't see anybody nodding yeah. or anything else. So Yeah, we can see it. Thank you. Okay, yep. So let me go ahead and just make another box here. So now I can decide where that box is going to be. I can resize it so I'm not stuck with it if I made a mistake right off the bat. If I just want to take a picture of it, I can simply capture the image. If I want to do a screencast like we're talking about, I can do capture video. I can choose whether I want my um, webcam included or not. Or no camera at all. I can choose my microphone. This one here uh, is a neat choice that a lot of the other tools do not have. And it's to record, it call, it's called record system audio. What that essentially means is if I'm playing some kind of a video, like I go to YouTube and I play a video as part of my recording, it will actually record the YouTube audio in addition to the video in my recording. So I'll, ha I'll have my voiceover going, plus I'll have whatever audio is coming from that video clip playing at the same time. So I can turn that on or off as well. So actually, I want it on right now. And then when I'm ready, I just do record. All of these pretty much give you the little 3, 2, 1 countdown. And now it's recording, and whatever I do within this window is going to be recorded as part of my screencast. If I go out to YouTube, as I mentioned, and ideally you would have this queued up ahead of time and, and be ready to, to play uh, whatever that video is going to be. So you don't end up with these delays like I'm finding right now. Um, anyway, it would record the video when it eventually opened up. It would record the audio for the video and so forth. When I, I can pause it, so that's what I probably should have done there. Hey, it's taken forever to load up YouTube. Just pause it for a second. Once my video is queued up, then I can start my recording again. Um, tells me that I've got 31 seconds worth of video right now. Uh, I could start over if I've just totally flubbed it you know, blooper reel type of a thing. Um, when I'm done, I just click on stop. And it takes me to a preview window so I can play it. 
And I don't know, you're probably not hearing the audio, but I'm hearing my own audio come back. I'm seeing me move my mouse around. You're, I think, seeing the video. So I'm just going to pause that. And so I can see my only choices down here now are to cancel it or to upload it to Screencast. If I upload to Screencast, that's where it's going out to their server and being stored out on their cloud service. Okay. The link to your media was copied to the clipboard. It tells me exactly what the link is to get back to that video. So again, this is the same link that I would share out with students or with parents or, you know, wherever it is that I'm going to um, share it out to people. And at this point, that's it. I'm done with that particular recording. If I wanted to go back to it, I could just simply paste in that uh, URL. And it would go out to their website. And there's my recording again. Um, I can share it with other people from here. Um, but your students and parents and whoever you've shared it with do not have to be signed in in order to see your video. If you've shared the link with them, then um, they can get to the video and see it. I can see the details of it, a little bit of stuff, not too much. Um, I can get the share link right here again or an embed code if you've got a, a website that you manage. Um, and I can sign in to my account if I want to see what other assets that I've got out there, get the um, codes off of those if I want to um, see you know, what's about to expire maybe some videos I'm about to lose because of the fact that I'm using their free service um, and so forth. So I'm not going to wait for that to come up. So that's text miss capture. Um, let me do one more. I'm just going to do the shift F11 again and just show you the snipping tool part of it. So again, similarly, I can say I just want to grab just that. I can hit the capture an image button and a lot like the uh, screencastify, um, and the snippet tools, um, we have some tools here where we can do like some highlighting or we can add some arrows to the call out to whatever it is that we want them to draw their attention to and so forth. So those <clears throat> extra types of annotations can be done um, on the um, item before you save it um, or copy it out. So same kind of thing here, I can just say copy it goes out to the clipboard and now I could go out to a slide or wherever it is that I want and I could paste that and there's my little screen clip that um, that I can use as part of my training materials. So that's TechSmith Capture. Um, I like it. The only thing I don't really like about it is the fact that the only place they give you to store your video is on their server. And um, no mention there again of any kind of closed captioning capability. If we would have, if we would be able to move it to YouTube or download it and then upload it to YouTube, we could use YouTube's closed captioning capability um, instead. But uh, I don't see that as a as a choice here. So Screencast-O-Matic is the the next one. Um, hey Bob. And, yeah. Do you know, is that free to do that if we were to create a video, upload it to a YouTube just to get closed captioning? Yes. Is that, it's free? Okay. Yep. And um, it's critical that people know, and I keep referring to closed captioning, but anything that's posted on your school district's website um, needs to be ADA compliant, Americans with Disabilities Act compliant. And that means having closed captioning. It means a number of other things as well besides videos, but um, we're focused on videos right now. So um, it's something that's it's important that you're aware of. Um, these videos, you're not necessarily going to put on your website, but at the same time, if they're shared out with any students that have any kind of hearing dis disability, um, that could become a problem for you if you don't provide closed captioning as part of it. Screencast-O-Matic um, sounds like uh, kind of a funny name, um, but it's actually one of my favorite tools. And um, it's one that I've been using for a long time. Um, it has a 15-minute recording limit. Um, so pretty long as far as, again, attention span is concerned. The, uh, it can be used on a Chromebook, a Mac, or a Windows uh, device. 
Um, it pretty much um, primarily runs from their website. Uh, you can include or exclude your webcam. Um, it does have, in the free version, some basic closed captioning capabilities that we'll talk about in just a second. Um, so Screencast-O-Matic is literally screencast-o-matic.com. Put the dashes in or leave the dashes out. It'll automatically put the dashes in if, if you don't. Um, this is what their website looked like. Um, you can sign up uh, with an account, but you don't have to. You can literally just go right to this blue Start Recording for Free button. If I click on that, it'll take you to the Screen Recorder page. It tells you that it's available on Chromebook, Mac, and Windows. Of course, they're trying to get you to upgrade to their premium version, but we can just say Launch Free Recorder. <clears throat> now, if you've never used this before, it will want to download something and make you go uh, and install it. But if you have used this before, it'll instead just open up this window up here where it's asking me if I'm OK with it opening the screen recorder launcher. So since I've used this before, all I have to do is click on that. It's going to take a second for that launcher to load up. And eventually, here it comes. OK, so eventually I've got this sort of um, outline all the way around the outer edges of my screen. But I can, like all the rest, I can resize this down. I can kind of drag it around to the part of the screen that I want to record. I've got some options here. Again, I can record my screen, my webcam, or both at the same time. So if I just said webcam, it's just going to be my camera only, and I would have to make sure I pick the right one. I'm going to leave it on both. If I want my webcam to be someplace other than the lower right-hand corner, I can drag it anywhere I want. Maybe if I put it in the lower right-hand corner, it's going to be in the way of whatever I need to focus on. Um, it tells me right off the bat that the max time is 15 minutes. The size is automatically filled in just from me resizing it with the handles but I could manually adjust that if I needed to. I can see that narration um, is enabled, and I can pick my microphone. Um, my computer audio, this is a premium ver um, upgrade requirement on this product. So I mentioned with um, TechSmith Capture that if you were playing like a YouTube video, that it can record the actual audio from that video. With Screencast-O-Matic, it can do that, but only if you pay for their upgraded version. So that's what this would be down here. And they give you a convenient link to go and upgrade to their premium version. OK, so those are the, the main choices I have to make. There's a bunch more preferences that I can go and look at, but Pretty much the defaults are fine, so I'm going to leave those alone for now. And all I've got to do now is hit the record button down here. It'll give me my countdown again. And at this point, I would be seeing my webcam if I had my proper webcam selected. Anything I do, flipping tabs and so forth, um, is getting recorded just as long as it's within that recording window. I could even demonstrate you know, how to use a snipping tool, which isn't even a web browsing utility. Um, when I'm done, um, all I have to do is click down at the bottom here, hit the pause button. I can see that I've got 26 seconds worth of video at this point. I could pick back up recording, or I could delete it, or I could say done. If I say done, it asks me, okay, what do you want to do with it? Do you want to save slash upload it, meaning save a local copy or send it up to YouTube? Or do you want to do some basic editing, editing with it? So I'm going to sit, click on Edit Video. It's going to process my video for a second. And again, it's trying to sell me some upgrades. I'm going to say no thanks to that. I can play back my video. I can see my little... Uh, kind of audio channels down here so I can see where I was talking and talking softer or louder, whatever. 
Um, I can do some basic trimming like we could with the other utility where if I started a little bit after I started recording or I had a bunch of dead space at the end, I can trim off the front or the back end. This little music note here, if I didn't record any kind of um, uh, voiceover on it, I could click on that and have it play some kind of a audio track over top, some kind of music. Uh, here's our closed captions um, option. Um, again, because we're not using the premium version, only one of these three choices actually will work for us. So the only choice that um, is available in the free version is this captions from file. What that means is that I can go and make a basic text file where I type out what I said and then I save it along with this um, uh, recording and it will do its best effort based on sort of the way that the wave pattern is down here at the bottom to know where that text should appear in the video. Um, I did do that. Uh, I did try it out. Um, it worked pretty well. Um, literally all your text file has to look like is something like this. <clears throat> so this is the, the script that I had used in the, the sample that I had done last night. <clears throat> so you just type whatever, hit enter a couple of times, type the next thing, enter a couple of times. <clears throat> and then each one of these sections will appear at the bottom of the video, just like closed captioning should. So it does work. It's just, it's not going to be perfectly timed. You do have to do it manually uh, and so forth. Um, because of the fact, though, that you can upload this uh, video clip to YouTube, you could then put it on YouTube and then use their free closed captioning automated tools to add the closed captioning to it after the fact. Uh, their premium version does include speech to text. So if you upgrade to the premium version, it will do the co closed captioning for you automatically. So you wouldn't have to rely on YouTube or build your own file or any of those types of things. Okay, so now uh, our three choices are we can save it as a video file. So that means basically downloading it to your computer. This would also be the way that you could put it into your Google Drive. So especially if you had something like um, Google Drive file stream installed where you can directly save things on your computer to your Google Drive. Um, I don't know, I'll show you what that looks like if I say save as video file. I can uh, type in whatever I want the file name to be. I can also pick my folder so I can go and browse. Because I've got Google Drive file stream installed, if I look at the different drive letters that I have available on my computer, I've got this drive G that is my Google Drive. And if I go to that, I can see my drive and then I can pick whatever folder in my drive that I wanna save it to um, directly. So Google Drive file stream is a separate thing that has to be installed, but it, it gives you access directly to your Google Drive from programs that don't normally communicate directly with Google Drive. So I would pick whatever folder I wanted to go to and then um, hit save. So let me go to my trainings folder and the free screencasting folder and I'll save it in there. Then I would hit publish. Of course, depending on how long your video is, will determine how long it takes to create that file. Um, but once the file is done, let me go and start to look for that folder. It should show up here in just a couple of seconds as the uh, as it finishes up. So then I would just right click on that file in my Google Drive, go to sharing make it available to anyone that has the link and then share that link out. Um, or of course, as we already discussed, we could also um, go into or have a, a YouTube channel and upload it directly to our YouTube channel. So if I go back to my folder here, here's my screencasting tools folder. The file name was called recording number six. There is that um, screencast that I just um, created and downloaded 
and um, it's now playable. Um, it's no longer editable by their tools because it's now exported just as a standalone MP4 file, um, just like any other video would be. Okay. So that is uh, Screencast-O-Matic. Um, so I think I've pretty much covered everything about that tool. That one, uh, I think I already mentioned, probably out of all of these is my favorite, um, frankly. Um, and I think it gives you the most capabilities uh, with um, still being on their free product. So what about Google Meet? Just like we're doing right now. I'm recording this, so why not use that as a screencasting tool? Um, not necessarily with a whole bunch of people, but um, you could just make a Google Meet, go to your calendar, add a new Google Hangout Meet, and then not invite anybody. Go into the Hangout Meet yourself, uh, publish your screen or share your screen, and then um, you know do whatever you want to do. Do your voiceover and make sure you've turned on recording. Um, if you don't know how to turn on recording in Google Meet, it's under the More Options button in the lower right. And um, that's where it shows up. You start your recording. You give it five or six seconds. It'll tell you that it's recording. It shows up in the upper left that you've got the little record button on. Um, basically, do your screencast and then stop recording. And um, again, you can save that uh, in your Google Drive. Actually, by default, it automatically goes to your Meet Recordings folder. Um, you could take it and upload it into a, a YouTube channel as well um, to add on their closed captioning. Um, one of the things that's unfortunate is that even though you can turn on captions um, in Google Meet, so I can turn on captions myself, you can turn on captions if you wanted to, those captions do not get recorded as part of the meeting recording. If they did, that would have solved a lot of problems as far as how to get the captions on after the fact for the recorded video, but they don't. So just be aware of that. Even if you turn on captions and you see the captions while you're doing the recording, um, if you go and play back your recording, the captions will not be there. So still, you know, you could turn around and use um, YouTube's closed captioning tool um, if you upload that Google Meet recording to uh, your YouTube channel after the fact. So it's free, it's simple, um, and it does uh, you know a lot of the same things that we've been talking about with a lot of these other tools. If you've got a um, iPad and you want to um, uh, do a screencast right from the iPad, um, I don't have a way of demonstrating this right now, but there are some free uh, screencasting tools available um, on iOS as well. Um, this screenshot here um, has a link to a few of them. Uh, notice actually Screencastify is uh, one of the, the ones that are listed here as well. Um, I'm curious to know if anybody else uh, you know, has any other tools that you've used or you like uh, besides the ones that I've already talked about. So feel free to throw those in the, the chat or, or unmute and throw any out that uh, you think are worth people taking a look at. I, I just want to say I have used uh, the Screencast-O-Matic when I made the Skyward tutorials that's on our website, and I loved it. It's super user-friendly. Um, it was super easy, too. Good. Thanks, Priscilla. Any others from anybody? Okay. Um, you know, I talked already a little bit about the whole ADA compliance uh, thing. It's it's something, again, that um, we need to be thinking about. Um, just about every ISD in the state of Michigan um, was hit by a complaint from the Office of Civil Rights over their websites not being ADA compliant. Uh, a lot of local school district websites uh, had that same complaint. Um, and it caused a lot of extra work and a lot of extra money by a lot of people to respond to those complaints. So uh, we do need to take that very seriously and, and be aware of that. Um, again, closed captioning is only one small part of that, um, but um, it's something that just you need to keep in the back of your head. Um, YouTube, there's a ton of recordings. If you just Google, you know, how do I add closed captioning to my YouTube file or video, 
Um, there's a ton of great YouTube videos of people showing you already how to do that. So I'm not going to take the time today uh, to go over that process. So one last thing I'm going to mention is um, maybe some whiteboarding apps that uh, you might want to use to kind of go along with whatever screencasting tool you're going to use. So, you know, the whole Khan Academy concept where, um, you know, you're seeing basically what looks like a whiteboard and he's, you know, writing on it, um, you know, one plus one equals two kind of a thing. Um, you know, that same kind of a concept you might do with some of these free uh, whiteboarding um, web pages. You may already have some software. Uh, that maybe came with your interactive whiteboard um, that would do some of these same types of things. Um, so like this um, Zeitboard, for example, let me open that up and just kind of show you. These also, though, have premium features that they want you to upgrade uh, to in order to, to get the extra stuff. So um, you do have to log into Zeitboard uh, for some of the, the features to work. Um, but uh, you can make a free account. So you can see I was in here already. Um, I can just use the pen tool and kind of start doing some writing. Um, not always the best. Um, I can change, you know, to an eraser. The nice thing about the eraser in here is you don't have to like scribble around to get the whole thing. It's a single click and it erases the entire line for you. Um, you can choose some different pen colors, different pen thicknesses. Um, that kind of thing. Um, it is sort of a gigantic board. So if I go to this four-way arrow, I can kind of scroll further over to the right and then pull this back when I'm, I'm ready. Maybe I've got my, um, I'm going to write out my problem as I go and I've already got the completed version hiding over to the side and I could just drag the two back and forth kind of a thing. So the whole concept here again is I'm already recording my screencast and then I use this tool as a way for me to be whiteboarding as part of that screencast recording, okay? Um, this particular tool also allows you to insert a picture or a PDF that you can annotate over top of. However, I found out um, that with the free version, you get one. As soon as you went and tried to open up a second PDF, it says, nope, you've already used up your one freebie. So um, that, uh, that kind of kind of stunk but um, anyway I did include also a another uh, free whiteboarding app um, AWW app um, very very similar you know you can come in here and just start drawing of course they've got uh, premium features as well that they want you to upgrade to um, eventually there we go same kind of concept you know I can pick my pen color I can pick my um, pen thickness, do whatever kind of drawing uh, I want. I can erase, um, you know, draw boxes, type if I want just some text in there, et cetera, et cetera. So the two things kind of, you know, need to go hand in hand for them not only to ideally see you as the teacher with your webcam, hear you, see whatever it is you're sharing and then if you want to do some kind of whiteboarding uh, feature like this you know google up some uh, free whiteboarding tools so that's what i've got for you today um, we're pretty much at the end of our time as well so i'm open to some questions bob did you share this um uh presentation i noticed the other emails i have a link to that but i don't have one on this one um, I thought I did, but um, if not, um, I will go back. Actually, if you look at your calendar invite again, okay. um, it should be in there now. Okay. Um, if you don't see it, let me know. But I had okay. sent the invite out ahead of time and ended up adding the link to the presentation after the fact. All right. I'll see um, what I can find. Thank you. Yep. Bob, what about using a pen for a touch screen? Is there certain types of things we should use for that? Um, generally speaking, um, you know, anything with not a, a sharp tip, um, but most of the time um, you would have the, the type of pen that has like the, the rubber end on it, almost like the eraser type of a thing. Um, or if you're using like a pencil, maybe use the eraser part of it. Um, uh, there's actual tablets that you can buy as well. 
that are sort of like a, a mouse, but it's it's more, more or less like a little drawing board, and it has an electronic pen associated with it, and that gives you the more natural feel of writing, you know, rather than trying to use your mouse to draw characters. Um, uh, Wacom, W-A-C-O-M, is a, a common manufacturer of those types of tablets. Um, but, you know, if, if you've got uh, a tablet already, um, like the iPad Pros, I know those are very expensive. A lot of people don't have an iPad Pro. They're almost a thousand bucks. Um, but those actually, you can buy a, a pen specifically for those as well. Um, if you get a Microsoft Surface, um, same kind of a thing. Uh, typically, it comes with a pen um, for these types of things as well. But if you're trying to just kind of use a makeshift pen, uh, you just got to be very, very careful with whatever kind of tip it is that you're going to put on that screen. Hey, Bob, would that work for a laptop little mouse thing? If you were to draw on that, do you think it would work with a stylus instead uh, of your finger? On You know what I mean? The, the mouse pad on a laptop? Yeah, yeah. You're, I mean, if, if you've just got a, a like a laptop with a touchpad, um, yeah, touch yes, you, you still would be able to, to draw the characters out that way, yes. Okay, well, I appreciate uh, everybody participating today and um, maybe I'll see you again. I've got two more sessions this afternoon and then the marathon is over. So um, let me know if you've got any follow-up questions or, 